Good morning everyone, welcome to this Advanced Steel um, Tips and Tricks webinar. Uh, thanks for joining me, my name's Rob, I'm one of the Advanced Steel Application Engineers at Greytech and I work within the Structures team. Um, if you need to get in contact with me about anything you've seen today or anything you want to see in the future, uh, you can get me on Twitter, um, I'm at MerrimanRobAS or rob.merriman at greytech.co.uk or you can get me on LinkedIn. A little bit about me, before I um, joined Greytech, I was a steel detailer for eight years using Advanced Steel on all sorts of steelwork and metalwork projects. Um, and then since I joined Greytech, I now do training, customization, demonstrations, and technical support for Advanced Steel. So over the six months I've been at Greytech, I've picked up quite a few tips and tricks and things that I didn't know. Uh, so we're gonna run through some of those today. This is, a repeat of the webinar that we did in January but I am going to throw in a couple more bits and pieces towards the end um, and it will be recorded so if anyone is missing anything as I'm rattling through everything you will you can get hold of this as a, a recording to pause it and set your system up as to to what I'm showing so what we're going to cover today is getting the template files to do more for you and more things that we can set in the template file going to look at modeling straight from an architect's layout, so just the lines that the architect sends us, and then how we can trim and extend those beams automatically. We'll look at copying joints and how we can work a little bit smarter with joints so we can copy them using joint groups. Then we're going to look at modeling staircases and then how we can save information into the library for use on, for use on future projects. And then we're going to look at um, the connection vault and the things that are in there to help our staircases. Then we're going to use one of my favorite tools, which is copy with adjustment and how it can really help you guys. Then we'll look at what we can set in the model to help get better GAs and how you can see what's going to show on your drawings. We'll look at the camera types and the variations. We'll then look at getting 2D CAD lines to show automatically in GAs. Um, I'll also throw in today, so we'll look at how to update all the project information if something changes. And we'll also look at the um, update revision button and how advanced it will automatically update any changes for you and then we'll look at customizing the bomb templates and the drawing process palettes to only show what you guys use not everything that's in the system so we'll start by looking at the template file so I'm not template files are stored in here so I've just got AS and AS template 2 so I want to create my own template so before I do anything I go to open and then files of type. If you change to drawing template, it takes you deep down into your C drive to your advanced deal templates. And instead of modifying the one that's in the system, anything I do to the system, I'm always gonna take a copy of. So that if anything goes wrong, I've always got my original template there. So I'll call it RM for Rob Merriman. 2018 so I open that file so anything I change in here this is changing my template file so I'm not doing any modeling in here I'm just sorting out everything for my template so the first thing I want to do I don't like modeling in a wireframe so I change my style to realistic and I'll change myself to a southwest isometric then what we're going to do I'm going to look at my project settings. So you could, if you had only two or three different clients, set up a template file for each of them with all the information changed. But I'm just going to always set the detailer to RM. So that's me. Just wait for that to come back. Then what we're going to look at doing is my NC options and my NC settings, because it's something that I always used to forget to change. And then my NC files will go in the wrong format. So I always ran NC based on single part numbers. So I'll set that in my template and that's set on every job. For my DXF settings, a lot of the time I found that my profilers could only read AutoCAD 2000 versions. So if I set that in my template and push OK, those two settings are done for every new project I start now. So it's one more thing I don't have to remember. The other thing I want to set up is my numbering. So I use SP number for standalone part equals assembly number. I want my single parts to start at one and my assemblies to start at one. 
we'll do uh, click apply and then we'll click cancel so again that's another thing i don't have to go in and change we can then also set up things in these templates so if you use cameras on every job which you will be doing if you're always using a foundation camera we can set it up in the template for us so i can call it anchor plan call it foundation get my capitals the right way around the style we'll look at we'll talk about styles a little bit later but stanchion layout pick box is what i would use for a foundation layout and i'm not worried about the scale and the detail box i can set to half a meter i'll set a camera in there we'll set it a meter away We'll do one for base type. And then for this one, I will choose base detail pick box and I want to set the scale at one to 10. I want to lock myself at half a meter above and below and we'll set it to a meter cube to start with. So there's two cameras. So every drawing, every new file I start, it will start with this template and then that information is set up so you could set one at three meters you could start setting grids in here so we're just getting these templates to work better for us the other thing that i ended up using using a lot is searches and saving that search information so we're going to set up some searches in this template file so i'm going to set up a search for steel elements tapered beam that have no model role so I'm going to type none choose that one so that searching for all of the objects I've ticked with a model role of none I'm going to save that as model role equals none you can just cancel out of that and we'll go back in I'll set up another one so I used to set one up for just beam items that were not grade 355. So if you go to common properties, you can go material. If you tick the not button, that will search for everything in the model that is not grade 355 and it will highlight it for you. So I can say beam is not 355 JR. If we look in the project explorer, there are my two searches and I'm just going to save and close this template. The one thing you'll have to remember is the open function remembers that you wanted to open a template file. So you need to change it back to DWG drawing to go and open any drawings. It trips people up because it always remembers the last thing you changed it to. So you would need to change it back to DWG. And then we'll look at opening a couple of files in a second. But now you see I've got AS template RM 2018. If the camera doesn't show, just do all visible. And there's our two cameras already set up. And there's our searches done. So you, the more searches that you use, the more you can set up. And then it's just something you don't have to do on every job. So we're going to move that's that's a real basic introduction to setting up your template but you can see that anything that you can set in your model and anything that you do on every job you can then start to set up in your template file so you just don't have to do it on every job so we'll look at modeling so i've got an architect layout you see it's gone back to dwt so i just need to go to dwg so i have an architect drawing so i'm going to use copy base function because I don't want to start modeling in this file. I want to copy it into one of my templates. So I'll copy all of that into this drawing file. We'll set the project information. Uh, Roof rebuild, we'll call it something like that. Now 
I'll just put some project information in. Uh, you see, if I go to project two, the detail is already there because I set it in my template file. So I've got where my architect wants the beams because I have his lines. I'll, I'll go to a wireframe for you guys so you can see it a little bit better. I don't need to model on top of all of those beams. I can use the function in here, which is beam from line. There is one from beam from polyline, but I'll discuss why we should and shouldn't use that. So all we're doing is selecting the lines Right click, the command line says, do I want to delete the set selected objects? That's do I want to delete the lines? So I'll, I'll click yes for this example. And then what it's done is it's converted all of those automatically into beams for me. So I can now set the size and the grade and the coating and that will do it for all of the beams. You can say, right, I want the system line top dead center and I'll call these beams. So that has very quickly given me my floor layout of beams straight from the architect's layout. What you, some of you may have noticed is that some of my lines were either too long or some of them were too short. So the beams are not noding out. So the system lines aren't quite exactly where you want them. So we do have a function in advanced steel. So if you go to your tools palette, your tools tab and scroll down there is a function for advanced trim and extend so i'll show you very quickly what it will do so we click the button it says what do we want to do trim extend or auto so if i click auto and then it's saying where do we want to go to the system line the center the face or to a line so i'm going to say to the system line so we need a boundary object so that will be i'm going to choose this beam this beam and I'll choose this beam and then the members that are to be trimmed or extended so that will be those three and if I right click you see that it automatically trims it back and it trims a system line back for me and on these ones it's automatically extended it for me so we can do the function again so I want to auto to the system so my boundary objects this time are going to be these three beams the members to be trimmed or extended are those two don't think it liked it because i've got two boundary objects and only one beam to trim it so i might have to do it in I did do it there. So you might, it might not work where you've got lots of things. You might have to do it in a couple of commands. So there's a couple of um, modeling tips to start with. Then we'll look at joints. So for this example, all my joints are going to be the same. So I'm going to open my connection vault. I'm just going to put a single sided end plate. I have a list of favorites. So in your connection vault, if you hover over con a connection, if you click add to favorites, so if I do click clip angle skewed, clip angle skewed now shows in my favorites. And if I just use the remove button, it will remove it from the favorites. We'll do a single sided end plate, select the two objects. A couple of things I can start to change in here is notching. So I can put a radius of five millimeters on the top detail and five millimeters on the bottom detail. In most of the joints, you get an erection tolerance. So I would always put a one, I used to put a one mil gap in there to allow for paint and galvanizing and things like that. That will just pull the end plate back one millimeter from the face of the beam web. And we'll probably go 16s will be okay for this. So once I've got that set up, I can use a joint copy to copy it round. I just click the joint and then it's asking me for the main beam which is that one and the secondary beam which is that one and the main beam and the secondary beam 
what that's done is that's placed all of those parameters into here but they are two separate joints so if our engineer changed something i would have to go and update one or update the other so what we do have is we do have create joint in a joint group multiple So if I choose that, it's now asking me for the source joint inputs one of two. So that's the main beam in all the positions I want to copy it to. So that in this example will be these three beams. And then the secondary beams are these ones. That puts the joint on. But if I go to the joint properties, you'll notice that all of my options are grayed out. That's because this joint here is a slave to this joint here so if i change this one now and we'll make it a bit silly and we'll change it to a 50 mil end plate you'll notice that this one that was just done with a joint copy nothing's changed but this one in here this one in here and this one in here have all updated to a 50 mil end plate if it's a job that you'd come back to after a week and you'd forgotten which one was the master and which one was the slave You can click this button that says upgrade to master and then this one becomes the master joint so I can change those back to 10 and then these ones will revert back to 10. There's another way to get the properties through onto drawing so what I'll do I'll just save this and call it roof steel. We will open up the training shed that we do. All of my base details, none of them are linked in any way. But my engineer has come back and changed something. So what I will do, I'll show you some things on GAs. I'm going to put in here base type 1. I'll show you that a little bit later. A couple of things I'm going to change in here. I'm going to change the plate thickness to 25. You'll notice that I have my column shortening. If it's set to plate thickness, it will just shorten the column by a plate thickness. If I change it to value, I can change whatever I want that to be. So if I change it to 100, it gives me a bigger gap in there. I used to use this for pack and grout value. So if I have, I'll change it back to 20. If I have a 20 mil base plate and I want 25 mil of pack of grout, I need to shorten my column by 45 millimeters. So that gives me a gap in here of 25 millimeters because it's the shortening value, um, the shortening slash extension value minus the plate thickness. So 45 minus 20 gives me 25 millimeters pack and grout. What we'll do, we will put some corners on, just put a 25 corner cut on each of them. And we'll change the anchor to a holding down bolt. We'll change it to a 20 or 8.8. And we'll put some washer plates on there as well. Just so you guys can see that I've changed this base detail. So I wouldn't want to go and edit all of those. I don't particularly want to delete them and then copy them around again. So if you go to the extended modeling tab, there is a transfer properties button and that will edit the several joints and copy it, copy the properties from one other joint. So I need to select the objects that I want to modify. So that's these joint boxes. And then which parameters am I pasting around? So if I push, click that base plate, you'll see then that all the other bases have updated to show everything I want. So we'll move quickly on to staircases. For staircases, there is in advanced steel, normally you would be provided on a survey or from your architect's layout, the first nose point and the last nose point. 
Advanced Steel needs that nosing line to be extended through to the finished floor level. So it needs to extend through to the total rise. So when you're setting that out, just please be aware that's how you get the stair macro to work properly. So I have my construction line in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my stair macro. What are we setting the stair out based on? So I'm going to use the start and the end point. So we'll just push enter. You choose the first point for the stair. So I'll choose the end point of the line down here. Then the end point at the top of the stair. You always have to go from bottom to top. And then it asks, do we want that line to, do we want our stair to the left of that line, to the middle or to the right? So I'll say I want mine to the right. And then I get my stair macro in. I always found a lot of the time, and we find that a lot of clients, they only use two or three different uh, stair configurations, so tread or stringer configurations. What you can use in all of the joints, not just the stair macro, but you can use in all of the end plate joints, the base plate joints, there is a library function. So in the end plate joints, it will have a lot more library entries. But if we go to the stair one, you've got default and sample one and sample two. But I have set a 250 by 10 flat bar stringer with a six mil closed tread. So all you do is you go through the macro and you set everything that you need to set. And you go back to the library and you click import values and then it will import those values for you. You might need to click edit to go and actually type a name in here. So if I change that to 250 by 10 flat, so you can type your own description in. If I click that description, it applies all of those settings that you set once to that stair and it updates it automatically for you. So you can set seven or eight stairs, spend the five minutes you need to set the macro up once, but then you don't need to set that macro up on every single job. You can have it stored in your advanced deal and it will always be in the library for you. The only thing I need to modify on this one is my bottom step I need a closed riser on. So we have step top and step bottom where we can make the treads completely different or you can just edit the values in the tread. So on this one I need my front leg to be 200 so it goes down to my floor level. I don't want that on all my other treads. Once I've got that set, if you've got multiple flights in the same model, that is a joint. So I can still use the joint copy, click the joint, and it just takes me back into how are we setting the stair out. So the start and end point, so I push enter. Then I need the first point for my stair. So I'm going to use this construction line. I'm going to use a midpoint, an end point, sorry. End point down there to end point there to the left, to the middle or to the right of the line. So I go to the right and that paste, that copies all of that setting out information. You'll notice it's gone back to a copy so I can keep doing this. So all I need is my, to set one flight out and then I can copy the joint around and then I can go to start to edit the landing and sort that out. But you can very quickly copy that around once you've set it up once using the joint copy there's a couple of other little uh, tips we'll show you for the stair macro so i want a vertical profile with a base plate or an anchor on it so instead of modeling it manually in the connection vault under miscellaneous there are six or seven stair tools so i'm going to use stair anchor angle select my stringer so ask me do i want a reference point so for this instance i'm going to say yes because i want my vertical profile set out from the nose line again we have a library entry so you can start saving all of this information in the library i'm going to click create vertical profile and the set out i'm going to use from the reference point if i change that to zero that goes in line with my nosing so if i want a 15 mil offset i will choose minus 15 
and that's put an anchor on there for me and if I need it to go even lower I could say well we'll make that 300 and that'll go or 400 into the floor level and then we can start changing the angle and the anchors whether it's on the left or the inside so I can put it in there the set out of it so I could go back and say right we'll make that 200 and we'll just bolt down to the slab then you can start changing all the parameters for the anchors and everything in there so that's one connection we can put on because it's a connection I can use the joint copy do I want a reference point yes so I can use the reference point of the nosing in there it won't hand it for me but what I can do is I can edit that joint and just change it to single left and then that's my stair detail nicely tidied up the last modeling command that I'm going to show you what I'm going to do I'm just going to create another little, quick little portal I'm just going to start it here we'll just click that just put a little portal in like that and we'll change the angle to 25 so I've got I'll just isolate let me just isolate these items so I've got two portals at different angles and I want to put a manual plate in here to pick up some kind of uh, something on site that uh, isn't covered on the stair macro, uh, the connection library. So it's not a coal roll pearl in it, just might be something for a bit of timber to lean on or something that they want to attach to later. So I need to model a plate on that rafter. So I'm going to use UCS object. If I click that, you need to be able to see the whole item on your screen you get all of these little lines coming out. This is the direction you want your Z axis pointing in. So I actually want my Z axis pointing in this direction and it'll put my UCS on the beam for me. So I can move that back 500. And then I can go and model a rectangular plate based on a center point. We'll make it 100 wide, but 300 long. I don't, because I didn't put the center point in, I can use the positioning of my plate just to put the bottom of the plate at the center point I clicked. And then we'll just weld those two items together. And we'll put it at the midpoint there. Oh, don't want bolts, I want a weld. So that's those welded. I'm going to put my ECS back to weld. Now, if I wanted that plate on this rafter which is at a different angle again I would then have to go and set my UCS again move it back model the plate there's a function in here called copy with adjustment so the object it says please select objects so I want to copy that and the weld so select the two objects please select the reference element so the reference element is my beam and now it's asking for a target element so the target element is this beam and it puts it square to that beam although it's at a different angle it knows that the plate needs to be square to it because that's how I modeled it and the set out dimension from there to there is 490 and if I check on this one go from the node point there to the node point there it's 490 so each beam has a start point and an end point so your beam has to have the same start point and the same end point because the copy with adjustment copies it from the beam start point. But I used to use this tool for things like stairs. So if I'd modeled a manual um, glass panel and my stair was rotating through 90 degrees, you can use the copy with adjustment and use one of your posts and it will copy around. It's a really, really clever tool. We'll turn everything on. We'll move on to GAs. So I'll delete those and I'll delete this stair and I'll delete that stair. 
So geos, I have my camera set up in here. We'll just change this to a foundation drawing. I'm going to change the type to anchor plan. And I'm going to change my style to stanchion layout. We'll do pick box. I'm going to lock myself. If you have a concrete slab in your model, I don't at the moment, I'm going to model one. Your floor, your stanchion layout drawing will num will put top of concrete levels in automatically for you. So I'll model a slab in there and we'll make it 15 by 15. So there's my concrete slab. Everything in this model is modeled at 000, zero, zero but I've been given a site level by someone of 33 meters. Uh, we would always advise never to model it 33 meters in the air. Always model at 000, zero, zero and then use level symbols. So I'm going to put a level symbol in here. I'm going to go to global and then we can type our level in. So 33 meters. Then we've got an absolute level and a relative level. So that's at 33. If I want to check my mezzanine is at three meters from that point, I will come in here and put a level marker in there. And it gives you the value relative to that global value. So that's the absolute value, so 36 meters. But it also gives you a relative value, so you can check that you've got that modeled at three meters. And then you can just keep putting them in to check that our eaves are at 39 meters, they're at six, and you can just keep putting and, put, and putting more level markers in. So I have my stanchion layout, which is for my foundation drawing. I have my concrete slab, and I have a base detail in here. So that's base type one. What I'm gonna do with this joint, is this is where you can start to work smart, is for the name, I'm going to call it base type one to match my camera. If you did that for all of those, I'll do it for this one as well. So you could do this as you're putting them in. If you put it in and copy it around, it'll copy that around. I'm going to change this to base type two. Change that one. That's a base type two. These will show on your stanchion layout, so you don't have to label them manually. So because that camera is an advanced deal element, I can copy it from one place to another. So again, I don't have to set up a new one. Copy it to the center of that plate. We'll just change that to base type two. And then I have a mezzanine drawing and I'll quickly put a 3D view in. So for a 3D view, position yourself where you want to and then use this UCS view and then just drop a camera in. So I'll put one in there, 3D view. Style I'm gonna choose is 3D all, no labels. I'll let it choose the scale for me and that's an overview camera. So I'm going to run my camera. So under drawing processes, cameras. So I've got all or anchors or overview or selected. So if I did all, it will do all cameras. So I'm going to do anchors A1. What that does is it looks for the camera type of anchor plan and it groups them all together. So it will group my foundation plan and my two base details on one drawing. And if I do overview, it will search for all my other views and it will group them all together. Just wait for those to run. So those have all run. So I'll save my model, put my UCS back to world. I'm going to have a look in the document manager. Okay, it wants to update my bases, that's fine. So if we do a preview, 
that has now put my foundation layout and my two anchor drawings all on the same drawing just by using the camera type. So because I've chosen stanchion layout, it will only show me columns and base plates and the grids, but it gives me all the column descriptions at 45 degrees. Where we put base type in the joint, it shows that automatically. And because I've modeled a slab, it knows that this uh, layout to put a top of concrete marker in. So this style is really good for foundation layouts. We can then very quickly just say, well, these grid extent, these grid balloons are overlapping our dimensions. So I can just turn them off on one side. I always get them the wrong way around. And that will tidy that detail up. And then this drawing style will give us the base detail. So I've actually chosen the wrong style because one style will dimension, one style won't. So if I go back to here, if you want it to give you dimensions, use base detail UCS, and that will give you that kind of information. There's a couple of ways we can open cameras. We can open them through the document manager, or if we just, we don't know which drawing it's run on, you can right click and use the show camera detail option. And that will take you straight to the GA that that layout is on. So here's my mezzanine drawing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete a couple of these labels. Because a few questions we get on support is why do the labels combine into one label? So if I insert a label, it might, should work. It will depend on the numbering. So we'll see what it, okay, these are different, so it wouldn't combine those. So what I'll do, I will just take a copy of everything so it doesn't have numbering on. We'll copy everything from there to that. So for that copy, I've just used transform elements. I wouldn't use a normal copy because a normal copy is just an AutoCAD copy and there's too much intelligence in there for it to work. So use transform elements and use the dialog here and it will copy OK. So these items now don't have numbering. So what I'll do, I'll just run this one particular camera. So go drawing processes, selected A1. Show camera detail. So these are all now not defined. So if I go to insert a label, it's the position of the arrow that determines if the labels get joined together. So if I now update this detail, there are rules within the drawing style manager that if these arrows are within a certain distance of each other, it's usually 30 millimeters and that's 30 millimeters on this drawing, not 30 millimeters in the model, it will link them together. So if I start that arrow head there and that arrow head there and did an update detail they wouldn't combine the last bit i'll show you with regards to drawings is it was roof steel if we've brought in an architect's layout so a floor plan i would want that to show on my ga so there's a setting in the management tool. So if you open management tools, go to defaults. If you type CAD in the filter, it'll change, it'll filter everything out for you. There's a tick box that says allow detailing of CAD entities inside camera drawings. So if we tick that, that will allow any CAD elements that fall with inside the parameters of the camera to show on drawings. The other, um, 
option you guys might be interested in is when you explode a drawing a lot of people want exploded drawings to explode back to an older version you can set that automatically in the management tools so at the moment if i exploded any drawings they would go to 2013 version so if i wanted them to go back to 2000 i would set that in my management tools and for every drawing explode it would automatically go to autocad 2000 file format so because i created this as a template I already have a camera in here. It is set up as a foundation, so I'll change it to floor plan hot rolled all. I'll just let it show everything. So we will just number the model first. And then we'll select the camera. And I'll just choose camera selected A1. We will see if this will work. We might need to set the camera. We'll have a look. So we'll do show camera detail. So yes, it did show it for me. That then creates that outline as a block that is linked to this view. So if we want to edit the block, we just double click on it. That's not changing anything in our model. It's created a separate block for us, so we can say, all right, well, we don't want that, and we don't want these labels. So I might be able to do select similar and just delete them. And then we can close that. Then I have just got my advanced deal labels, but I've got all my beams showing on top of the architect's layout, so you can then start dimensioning to it. Because this has been done using the camera and that setting, it will link through to the to the view. So if I change the scale, that block automatically changes for me as well. And if I move the view, the block moves with it. The other bit of information that I will show you, let's just close these drawings down. We've all been there where we've accidentally typed a wrong job number in and then run 200 fab drawings. There's no need to go through and change all of those fab drawings individually. So in our model file, go to project settings and say we've, that should be 3541. If you go to the labels and dimensions tab under management, You've got this update page header. So that's the page header. That's all the project information on the fab drawings. So to show you I'm not cheating, let me first show you a fab drawing. Where the model, well, the model is 3451. So just to make it a little bit easier. I'll change it to one, two, three, four. So go to our labels and dimensions tab under management, click update page header. What that will do is that will open all the drawings that you've already run. So if you've got two or 300 drawings, it might take you a couple of minutes. But you see the project data has been updated and that will update the project data for all of those drawings. So if I now go to the document manager, and do a preview that's updated to one two three four so you can do it for contract you can do it for the detailer so anything that's in project settings that's shown on your drawings so the client all that can be updated with one click of a button and in a couple of seconds for the whole job the last bit i'm going to show you is how we can start to customize what shows in these lists so i personally didn't have all of these showing because i didn't run all of them so we'll look at the ones in the drawing processes and the bomb templates so for drawing processes these are both controlled on the output tab we need to go to the drawing process manager If you expand drawing processes and click on the main heading, so assemblies, you then get a tick box down the side. And these are all the ones that show in the tool palette. So I personally 
would only ever run A1 single bomb and A3 single bomb for my drawing. So this is just my personal preference. I don't want to see everything else in the list. I only want to show the two and I'll just do the same for parts. For parts, I only wanted A3 single bomb and A4 single bomb. Click apply. What we need to do is we need to shut down advanced steel. So I'll do the same for the bombs. So I'm gonna to go to bomb editor. And it's the same process. We're gonna click on the folder heading. So I'm just gonna change this to structured lists. If I click on the folder heading, I then get all the tick boxes. So I would run assembly list, bolt and anchor list, bolt erection list, number two, a loading list and a material list XBEV. So that one I've changed under the user structured lists. So just do OK. For those changes to work, you need to shut down these pallets. Restart and advanced deal won't work if you have those pallets open. So I'm just going to save that. But the pallet, the most important thing is that the pallet is closed. So then I will reload my advanced steel. I'll just wait for that to boot back up. And then when I reopen my pallets, those changes will have been taken into effect. Just give it a second to catch up with me. So I can choose my template file. I've got my advanced steel tool palette, but now when I put my drawing process palette back on and my bomb templates back on, I'll just make sure those are all linked again. So my drawing processes under, so I did my user, uh, sorry, my advance. I've only got assemblies A1 single bomb and A3 single bomb. And under parts, I've only got the ones I want to show. For my bomb templates, I changed the user setting. So click the flag and it will go to user. And if we look, I've only got the five lists that I wanted to show. So not the 15 or 20 that are available to you. So if there's only certain ones you use all the time, then you can control what shows and you can start just customizing what shows in these lists. But the critical thing is that you shut the toolbar down before you restart advanced steel and that's the end of this tips, tips and tricks webinar i'm hoping to do a couple more throughout the year so we'll look at other aspects of the system and other tips and tricks that we can show you from there um, so thank you everyone for attending um, if anyone does have any questions you can either put them in at the bottom in the question bar and i'll pick them up on an email and email you back or contact me through twitter or linkedin or the email address on the screen um, and then we'll pick up any any questions that you guys have got from there.